Well, indeed, uh, Francis, and one of those uh, who does believe uh, that uh, a wrong message is being sent here with regard uh, to uh, the additional $10.5 billion for SAA, the CEO of uh, the organization undoing tax abuse. Uh, that's out. Uh, Wayne Divinaj, he joins me now live. Wayne, a very good evening to you. Thanks indeed for your time. So a $10.5 billion cash injection for SAA. You now saying you're going to launch a boycott of SAA uh, because the state is simply not listening to the public. You've given your input and you're saying it's sucking up too much funds. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite atrocious, actually, that we need to take much precious uh, resources and fund a vanity project like SAA. And you know that the business uh, rescue practitioners based that request of 10.5 billion rand uh, some months ago. Since then, I ought to have uh, re-forecasted the airline and aviation industry in Africa to to be far worse off than uh, than it was back then. On top of that, we've seen international airlines breaking partnerships and deals with, uh, you know, Emirates, with with Airlink and Qatar, with uh, Fly Safe Air, uh, into the local and regional markets. These are also going to further dampen SAA's um, ability to survive. And even prior to all of this knowledge, we don't believe that 10.5 is enough. So we've been calling for the closure of SAA. Obviously, we are, we are aware of the jobs uh, and, and the government needs to take heed of that in their separation packages. But we cannot take money from where we desperately need it and bail out a non-core state-owned entity like SAA. The state has no role to play and no successful role, as is, as is as demonstrated, in running complicated and highly competitive uh, industries such as uh, airlines. And, it's, uh, you know, yeah. we've, we've, we've met, we've tried to engage, we've yeah. sent them the messages. They don't seem to be listening. So now it's time to turn on consumer power, people power. We've done it before, we'll do it again. If government isn't going to listen to its, the people, the people will have to exercise their power and that is a boycott against SA, and it's going to be a very structured one. Uh, that's exactly tourism, what I wanted, wanted to ask, uh, 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 Wayne. What form yeah. will this boycott take? Well, you see, uh, SAA will require the public to fly. Now, a lot of people don't fly SA. We know that out of choice because not only are they the most expensive, uh, but we but we now call on businesses and the public to be very cognizant of their flight choices. Obviously, we know SAA is not flying at the moment, but when they do come on board and start to try and fly again, they're going to be hard-pressed to do so. So hopefully this is a message ahead of the launch for government to take stock of this potential threat against the airline and make a different decision. Uh, and there are many ways to force businesses or get businesses to wake up to this call, international tour operators. Uh, you know, we, we can find out uh, yeah. as, as a civil action movement who is flying. We can, we can list and publish uh, companies that are supporting SAA and going against the call mm. for a boycott because this is, you know, this is a patriotic move, quite frankly. Uh, we don't need this airline, where other countries have demonstrated you, you don't need yeah. it. We're not going to lose one seat of passenger coming into this country. All right. The government should be an enabler of competitive international license, the local, uh, locally owned, there can be locally owned airlines, but the state itself should have no role, as it is demonstrated it cannot participate in a successful airline. It now must get out. And this, yeah. this allocation of 10.5 billion rand is a slap in the face of the people. All right, Wayne, one of your other concerns was that the debt crisis itself, Treasury putting a halt on uh, uh, increases uh, in the public sector. But what you're saying now, what you would like to see is for the labor unions to come to the party. You're saying that the unions have yeah. basically been holding government at ransom. For far too long now, you know, government has, has not exercised leadership and, and, and put their foot down when it comes to salary increases. Uh, as Tito Mueni said, 7.5% on average for the last number of years. This is well above inflation. We cannot have that uh, continuously. It is time now to reduce salaries, or certainly in the next round of wage negotiations, the unions now must agree and understand that uh, there should be no increases. Mm. Uh, we shouldn't be fighting each other in court. This is a no-brainer, quite frankly. Uh, the state is paying far too much, and the state is not doing enough, actually, to bring down the wage bill, let oh. alone the increases per head. Uh, but... You know, we've heard in the past these discussions around reducing the size of cabinet, but not much has happened after mm. a small move was took place when Cyril Ramaphosa came into power. A lot more needs to be done in that space as well. There's yeah. just far too much money being spent on the wage bill and Labour needs to come to the party.
Wayne, thank you very much uh, for engaging with us uh, here on the program on The Full View. Thanks indeed for your time. The CEO of the organization Undoing Tax Abuse, uh, Alta Wayne Duvenich. And of course, uh, uh, the mothballed national airline has been allocated the 10.5 uh, uh, billion rand cash injection. Uh, him basically saying it's a bottomless pit, it should not happen. And now they'll uh, embark on some uh, form of boycott of SAA.